18 months later now 18 months since I've had this scan computer 3SX system and 64 gigabyte 5950X RTX 3080 2 times 1 terabyte NVMe drive delivered on the 7th of March 2021 so 18 months and this is my review of the good the bad and the ugly of scan systems what you can expect in terms of longevity and issues that will crop up and how scan computers respond I did have a catastrophe in the first week when I had to completely reinstall Windows from scratch and in that respect the USB recovery, uh, recovery disk was completely useless absolutely useless didn't do anything in terms of performance well I was expecting a, a much bigger jump in performance over my previous six year old computer a 4790k uh, 32 gigabyte machine it's not been that much of a performance there it, it, it is better I don't have to reboot as much and it is more stable what about Cindy Benchar's 20 score? Has it gone down? Let's have a look. I think this computer's been up for about a week. Let's see what the Cindy Bench score is. Cindy Benchar 20 benchmark. Uh, I think it's uh, slightly overclocked. Not much. Normally, on a clean boot, it should get around 10,000. 600 score 10,400 to 600 let's see how much it's gone down let's see if it's over 10,000 or under oh that is pretty good I was beginning to be lower than that so there's been no system degradation in terms of performance it's basically the system's running as good as new um, the only downside was yeah I had a Windows related failure at the beginning which means I had to completely reinstall that was a pain in the butt um, and uh, what about uh, support there is a lag between what uh, scan support responses usually I could figure out the solutions well I did figure out the solutions before scan respond technically I would rate them they support I would rate them 8 out of 10 they basically were just uh, they could have been worse but they basically would just iterate what um, like a standard checklist they have it, it didn't really work for mine what issue with mine like I said the USB disk proved useless in terms of it was useless I couldn't reinstall Windows from the USB disk they could have saved a hell of a lot of problem if they had included uh, you know when they send you the computer if they created a, a Windows backup recovery image that would have saved a lot of time you just go to the recovery image and reinstall instead I had to download a Windows you know, 10 and install it do a fresh install from that after formatting the drive the next big issue was the Corsair CPU water cooling radiator the HX 150i which has been a pain in the butt as it periodically bricks itself you know it just out of the blue it can get stuck or if you do a firmware update using the IQ software let me load IQ. What, what it is, I just, I don't use the IQ software because it's very buggy. And, uh, you know, this was a pain in the butt. I even created a video to help other people because this comes up a lot. The IQ software is garbage and a lot of people, you know, have issues with it. Here we go, and you can do a firmware update, which I would advise against doing. IQ software is garbage. 
I've not uninstalled installed it. What I do, well, this is what I've got a H150i RGB Pro XT cooler in it. And basically, I did a firmware update and it just uh, got bricked. It, the fans were running at full speed. I even did a video solution to it after I figured it out how to unbrick your H150i. So I did a video for that, which many people thank me for, because this is a common problem with the H150, that they easily get bricked, even if you do nothing. Like subsequently, about say six weeks ago, it happened again, and I wasn't even doing anything different. H150i wasn't running, but suddenly, fans 100%. So I had to go through the same rigmarole. Obviously, second time around, you're more experienced. I, I unbricked it within, 10 minutes i didn't have to do you know going to to the you know trying to find the solutions and creating a step-by-step -step process i already knew what to do boot to safe mode just go through the steps in the video it's straightforward but it's happened twice now you know h150i it's hardware is hardware is buggy not just software software is bad enough but the hard it did it on its own without me even running h150 the iq software or doing anything it just bricked itself for some reason so corsair might want to do something about that and then disaster strikes about nine months after i started using it one of the bloody nvme2 drive dies course it again luckily it was the d drive that died not c else it would have been a bigger recovery job than i had of course d drive was not fully backed up so i did lose some work so one of the nvme2 drives died failed and the system would not boot early warning signs were that it was running a little hotter than the c drive about six degrees hotter and that the system began to noticeably take a lot longer to boot I, at least twice as long as the original time I, I was thinking why is it taking so long to boot it's about 30 odd seconds it used to be half that anyway it got to the point where it just refused to boot that's when it failed and going into BIOS showed that the drive was not even being recognized as having any free space zero so to get the system to boot, I had to remove the drive, which was not straightforward. I had to pull out the GPU and so on. And I got in contact with scanned computers via the messaging system. And after a bit of toing and froing over about, about a week, I finally convinced them that the drive had failed and that I did not need to send in the whole computer back to them. You know, to replace the NVMe2 drive, all I needed was a replacement drive and I would install it myself and then return the dead drive to them afterwards, which they said to do. You gave me a couple of weeks, so you got two weeks to return the drive or else they're going to bill me full amount. So they went along and I replaced the drive in January this year and now nine months on, so far so good. So oh, the drive is running hotter than C, oh, about 45 degrees to 43. Anyway, it just illustrates Corsair products are not as reliable as they should be, as we think of them as being. That's you know, issues with two Corsair products, the cooler, the radiator cooler, and one, one of the NVMe2 drives. That's not good. Anyway, so a lesson to all out there, back up your drives especially your system drive in fact clone it clone it to another drive just in case of failure so you can quickly swap it and get your system back up and running that's what i recommend clone your system drive back up your other drives all right so how do i rate scan computers from 18 months on Okay, build quality, I would give them 10 out of 10. Cabling was good, components properly installed, unlike overclockers. You know, they glued the fans onto the cooler, you stupid. So that was on the earlier machine. But technical sport, uh, average, I give them 6 out of 10. Technical response to the failures was good, so I give them 8 out of 10. I did not make too much of a drama out of the failed 
MP600. Um, what about that original software installed? 2 out of 10. I had to wipe and reinstall. What it is with these bloody, you know, system providers, they install so much crap. The systems are not unstable. So I recommend when you get your system, wipe it and do a fresh install of Windows. Download it you know, onto a USB and just do a complete install. Uh, the recovery USB, that was a big fat fail. They get a 0 out of 10 for that. The USB stick was worthless there. The copy of Windows on it would not install. Uh, so I had to just completely ditch that, do my own. System longevity, well, it's still working 18 months on, so 8 out of 10. Can't hold Corsair Cooler MP600 as a fault of scan, you know. The system works, which is more down to the components, good good uh, power supply and so on. System performance, it has slowed down. Has it slowed down? I can't tell, so 10 out of 10, I can't tell if it's slowed down. It probably has, but you know, I don't thrash it. I don't thrash the GPU or the CPU. So I've looked after the system. So overall, I rate scan computers after 18 months at about 7 to 7 off out of 10, which is good. Now, they need to address some issues with their Windows install. It's not stable. And that useless USB stick. So, it's working fine. Fingers crossed the MP600 drives don't fail again. I would definitely avoid Corsair NVMe2 drives because that's too big a failure to recover from. And the cooler has not bricked itself in it at least six months. So what I usually do on boot up is to close the Corsair IQ app that is not running in the background. It's bloatware. Corsair software sucks. So if you've got one of those coolers, just, yeah, have it run on boot so it can do set the card properly but then uh, exit IQ and so if you like this video then do give the video a thumbs up and remember to subscribe for new videos new updates of various hardware releases and so on